Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to discuss the topic of dealing with negativity um, and toxicity and toxic people and situations. Um, there is a couple of things that you could do that could help you identify negativity or kind of cope with it or deal with it. It's very easy to say you should just walk away. Um, but if it's in your workplace or a family member, then it's not that easy to just cut them out or walk away from the situation. Wherever you go, there's going to be negativity. So if it's a job, you may leave and try and find a new job. But just remember that with that new job, new people and new situations and new sorts of negativity will come to you. We will always face and deal with that. So it's important to actually, instead of running away from it, um, developing coping mechanisms and how you could deal with it and how you let negativity affect you. If someone is bringing you down, that's because you're above them. Nobody's going to bring down someone who's below them. It's usually that you're doing better than them, you're looking better than them, you're smarter than them, or whatever it is, the insecurity is with that person and you're above them. That's why they're bringing you down. And if you go dealing with negativity with that mindset that the reason I'm getting this is because I'm doing something right, then it's harder for someone to knock you down because you're sure of yourself and you're confident in yourself and what you're doing. So of course, self-love is the basis of all of these situations. If you love yourself, you're sure of yourself, you're strong in your beliefs, um, then it'll be really hard for negativity to even affect you because you've got your vision, your morals, everything straight. But there are certain situations that people still are very toxic towards you. Now, let's say if it's a relationship and it's a partner, then you've got to really see that if that person's being very toxic towards you and the situation is very, very negative and there's this constant negative energy, what is that costing you? So the cost of negativity, um, it's very important to identify that and see if it's meaning that you have to compromise or work on issues then that's doable but if it's costing you you and your happiness and you have to completely adapt yourself to keep your partner happy to make things work you have to completely forget yourself and lose yourself for them to feel like they're winning or it's okay then that cost is you so you have to really think about it and weigh the pros and cons and the costs and see whether that's worth it. And if it means that you have to sacrifice yourself completely for someone else, then you need to remove yourself from that negative situation. It's also important to decipher where the negativity is coming from. If it's not coming from your close circle, so it's coming from a wider community, especially with Asian cultures and brown cultures, <clears throat> the community plays a big role in our lives. The way we're brought up, we're always told that it's important what people think and you're gonna bring shame to the family, etc. So if the negativity is coming from the wider community, not from your immediate family or friends, and it's coming from the internet or things like that, you have to understand that you can't please everyone. That's impossible. You're not a saying, you're a human being. And there's nothing that you could do. Some people will not be happy with what you do. Regardless, it's their own issues or is something else that you've done or said completely irrelevant or doesn't connect with what you're doing right now. It doesn't matter. They've developed this dislike for you and that will always be there. So it's as long as you're keeping the people around you happy and the people that matter, whose opinions you value, then that's all that you should be worried about. It's not about the wider community. It's not about other people and um, it's not about pleasing everyone. So you have to be strong in your no's the same way that you're confident in your yes. So when it comes to people asking you for favors or telling you to do something and it doesn't feel right for you and it goes against what you believe in, then when you say no, you have to stick with that no and stand your ground. Put some muscle into it and stick to your no. Respect that no now that you've said it. You've put your boundary down and it's not like if you draw a line in the sand and then someone comes forward, then you move a few steps back and you draw a new no. No, you stick to the original no that you've said and you believe in your word and trust your gut and trust yourself that I've said a no for a reason and I'm going to stick with that and I'm not going to get bullied out of it. So it's important to understand that you can't please everyone and also you have to be able to say no and stick with that and stand your ground. 
Also, if you're constantly busy doing your own thing and you're concentrating on your own happiness and bettering yourself and your work, your career, then you don't have that much time to be concerned about what other people think and say. So always concentrate on your own light rather than seeing what shade other people are throwing at you. Um, it's not about what they think of you, it's what you think of yourself. So if you're constantly working on self-improvement, on growth, on strengthening yourself, then you don't actually have the energy or the time or the concern to worry about what people say to you and to worry about what they think of you. So if you stay focused and you're doing what you love, it's really hard for someone else to come along and take that away from you when you're so confident and sure of what you're doing and where you're going. So it's all developing the skills of knowing your worth and value, loving yourself, respecting yourself, and understanding that regardless of where you go, regardless of who you're dealing with, there are different types of negativity and you just have to learn how to cope with it. If that negativity comes from a family member and you know that they will always be in your life and you can't get rid of it, then you have to manage your expectations. Because if you know that that person is only capable of this much and this is just how they are they have a very negative approach outlook it's very hard to win them over to please them to keep them happy then you have to lower your expectations and understand that i can't this is that how this person is and that's just how i'm going to treat them at their level at their capacity and past that point that doesn't concern me that i'm not going to get involved in that and nor am i going to have expectations of them i know what i'm dealing with and I've set the bar and they've set their bar and that's all it's ever going to be. So when you manage your expectations and lower them, then you're not disappointed so much or you're not hurt or you're not because you expect that negativity. You know that's the person. It's understanding why they're so negative, understanding the backstory of to, as to what developed that negativity and then how they are re projecting that onto you and expecting it and just managing it. Once you've figured out what the cost of the negativity is, who it's coming from, how you can manage it, then it doesn't get to you so much. And all in all, it comes down to how much you love and respect yourself and trust in your word. When you're very sure of yourself, it's very difficult for people to knock you down. So remember that all that matters is keeping yourself happy, keeping yourself focused and concentrating on what's in front of you. And also that there will always be negativity around us. So it's all about not learning how to manage it, reading the signs and understanding that it's a projection of their insecurities rather than what you're doing. You're doing something that they want to do. You're looking a way that they want to look like. You are dating someone that they want to date. That's why that negativity is projected onto you. It's not a reflection of you, it's a reflection of the person who's giving it to you. And when you start thinking that way, it's very easy to just get on with it and not let it face you. I've worked in the fashion industry for a very long time and the fashion industry is a very, very critical environment. So most of my adult life, I've dealt with criticism and negativity and the opposite to criticism is compassion. So the most critical environment balances out with the most compassionate environment. And I've had to learn to be compassionate towards myself because my environment was so, so negative and so, so critical and toxic. So that compassion was, it's like it's engulfed me and helped me focus on what was important to me and let other people's opinions come and go. Your time and energy is worth so much more than other people's opinions. So that's what you need to remember. If I'm gonna give this situation or this person or this remark my energy and time, is it really worth it? And almost always is a no. And once you're focused on yourself, everything else kind of falls into place. You're so distracted with your own life, you really don't have the time to, one, receive negativity and two, give it out. So I really hope that this has helped you guys understand different types of negativity and how to deal in certain situations. If you have any questions, please write them below and I see you here again soon. Thanks so much for watching.